Hey everybody, Mike here again. Sorry I've been out, I've been on vacation, but I'm back and we're gonna get straight into this. Today we're gonna be talking about stepping into leadership roles. And I wanted to talk about this today because um, I've always had this fear of leading others and had this desire to come alongside other people and you know, share my testimony in a way that's impactful. However, I've always felt nervous, like I'm not enough, right? Like I'm not sufficient uh, for this task. And obviously that's a lie. Uh, the Lord calls us to lead others. He calls us to be alongside others. Uh, servant leadership, right? It's not just do this and do that. It's how can I come alongside this person and share my testimony in a way that's impactful and in a way that uh, transforms their life. So today we're gonna to be talking about uh, Galatians 6, 1 through 11. And what I'm gonna tell you about is this idea of stepping into a leadership role. I see a lot of talented people around me, right? And like myself, they're not stepping into this, I, this position that the Lord is calling them to, to share their testimony, to share what it is they have. Though it be little in their eyes, they need to uh, step into this position where they're um, sharing what's on their heart and in their mind. And there are some things that will help you do that a little better. So let's talk about it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is pull up my, uh, other screen here. I don't have two screens, but I'm going to slide over, forgive the, uh, <laughs> ghetto nature of this. All right. And Galatians six. Okay. It says here, um, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So this idea of carrying each other's burdens to fulfill the law of Christ. I think that if we uh, come alongside one another and, and share our burden with them, then they will feel more open to uh, kind of talking about their struggles and, and what have you. But that's not really the focus I want to have today. I believe that it's important, and I'll come back around to that another day. Uh, let's see here. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. However, whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Now, let's talk about leadership. Why are we afraid of leadership? Let me scoot over again. Here we go. So we're afraid of leadership because we don't have our act together, right? If we're sowing to uh, please our flesh instead of to please God, right? then we're not going to feel qualified to lead whatsoever. Isn't that true? And why should we, right? Because we're not uh, being stewards, good stewards of the time and uh, the money and the people in our lives and all of these things that God has given us to be good stewards of. So why should we feel qualified, right? Instead, we bury ourselves in our work, in our creativity. But to what effect? You know, oftentimes we... Think about this, uh, the fact that God has called us to do something for him, right? Well, I just want to tell you this now. Your offerings, your creativity, they're worth nothing, right? If you're not sacrificing first. God wants your sacrifice. He doesn't, he, he wants your obedience. Uh, he doesn't want your sacrifice is what I meant to say. And so often we get caught up, right? Uh, I think it was Cain and Abel, right? His brother brought a, a better sacrifice and he's like, I just want you to do what I, uh, I asked you to do and go make right with your brother. So um, we don't feel qualified because we're not actually being obedient, right? So how many of you are exercising each day? How many of you are pouring love and attention and respect into your families and, and your loved ones, right? How many of you are stewarding your money well and saving your money and how many of you are just sitting at the computer creating a video game and not doing any of those things right i'm guilty of this i i'm telling you from uh the essence of who i am i want to be transformed by god and uh true leadership is taking someone on the journey you're not going to be perfect right but you're taking someone on that journey with you 
as you figure it out. You're coming alongside them. You're being transparent and open about your struggles in a way that other people feel that they can uh, come out and talk about the same uh, struggles and such, right? Um, and I am going off the cuff here, so so bear with me. So uh, you may be failing because you're being lazy if you're just sitting at the computer creating these games and such, but you also may be uh, failing because you're giving your time and attention to something else. I want to talk about that for a second, okay? Because I've felt this very strong over the, the last uh, couple of weeks, actually. I uh, went on vacation, you know, I've been given a lot of family time to my son and my girlfriend, and I haven't really been able to, to do the YouTube, I haven't been able to do, um, you know, creative endeavors, like creating my, my game. And I felt like such a failure for the Lord, like what I'm doing. But then I realized that he called me to a different season to just pour into my family and to pour into those around me who need me. And if you focus on becoming a godly person, right? If you focus on becoming transformed rather by Jesus on the daily and you are taking care of your temple, which is your body, you're, you're loving and respecting others and you're pouring time and attention to your family, God will honor that. He will find time for you to be creative. But if you're just sitting around doing nothing and you're just trying to create a game and getting angry at people when they interrupt you and, and eating Cheetos all the time, nothing wrong with Cheetos, except for the fact that when you burn the hot Cheetos, they're <laughs> doused in chemicals. Um, but you know, um, I really don't see God leaving you out in the cold, right? Seek first the kingdom and uh, seek first God's kingdom and all of his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And I think when we don't do that, we put things in our own hands and our own control. And we have this desire to just be um, in control of our, our lives. And God calls us to lay down our lives every single day. And the only time when I've seen transformation in my life is when I've done that against my desire. Right? Because all I desire to do is to create my game face story and to release it to the world and to impact everyone around me. And I went... I went ham on this. I went at length in my uh, syntax and ministry video, so I won't get into it here. Um, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with being in a different season of your life and where the Lord is calling you. So don't be ashamed of um, not being able to be creative because you're taking care of yourself and, you, and you're taking care of your family. However, uh, that doesn't mean don't put the effort in, right? I have plenty of videos on this as well, on being lazy, consuming things versus creating things. Uh, and what have you. So, but for today, I want to talk about this idea of becoming a leader. Uh, as I said, I have lots of people around me who are just really prepped and primed to become leaders in their uh, in their field, right? And they're not doing it, and and they're not being obedient to who God has called them to be. And I want to see that happen. I really, really, really want to see you guys step up in the place where God has called you to be, and I want to see you pour into those around you and stop being obsessed with what you got going on. Because what you got, it'll be here today and gone tomorrow. No one cares, right? Nobody nobody cares about what you're creating until they know that you care about them. And I know that's cliche, but I'm serious, right? Don't make your art an idol, all right? Uh, and if God calls you to lead, by all means, you better do it, okay? He's calling me to start this YouTube channel. He's calling me to talk to you all about these things. And I'm tired of being shy about it, you know? I if I'm honest with you, I haven't created in a few weeks because of the vacation. However, I've been, uh, I felt kind of like imposter syndrome, right? Kind of like a fraud. And uh, honestly, I've just been, I felt like afraid, right? But I'm not an expert. I'm not claiming to be. I'm claiming to have passion and a desire to talk to you guys about these things. So there's no reason why I shouldn't get on the camera and do it. It's not perfect. It's not well scripted, but who cares? And if there's something in your life where you're uh, called to create something, why are you waiting? You know, if you look at every single thing in history where somebody has created an empire out of something that, even if it's not biblical, right? Look at Elon Musk and all these people. You know, he started with a lot smaller things than than sending rockets to space and electric cars, right? He started with PayPal and he started with uh, uh, smaller endeavors prior to that. But we have to get out of our minds this idea that we are afraid to step into leadership roles 
because we don't feel qualified. And just to wrap it up and come back around to this idea of obedience, if you are in the Word daily and you are, are, are in community with other believers, you're qualified. I'm giving you permission to go out and create that thing so long as you stay centered. It's not about being balanced. It's about being Christ-centered. If you're not Christ-centered, uh, don't create anything because you need to get your butt back in front of your Bible and in community with other believers and in prayer, and you need to go fix some relationships that you've damaged, right, in your home and outside of your home. Uh, and then by all means, create, right? If you feel like you're not sure that you... Um, have the right idea that you're doing what God has called you to do. Stop looking for signs and symbols. God has given you the freedom to create within the confines of being uh, Christ-centered. If you're Christ-centered, uh, go for it. And I, I heard this analogy. I don't remember where I heard it. I heard it yesterday, so forgive me. Uh, someone uh, put a block of ice in the water and said, okay, go skate on that. And there were sharks all around it. Well, the person skated and they, they fell into there and got eaten by sharks or whatever. This is hypothetical, of course. No one really got eaten by sharks in this example. Uh, however, you know, the boundaries of being Christ-centered, those are good, right? Because then you put a wall around the ice cube and say, okay, go skate on the ice cube. They're not going to fall into the water and get eaten by sharks. And God has the same boundaries for us. And the sooner we learn to value those boundaries and that structure that he's created for us to be more Christ-like, I think then we'll feel more confident in our ability to create, right? And in our ability to um, to lead. So if you're not leading right now and you feel like God has called you to lead, but you're just terrified to do it, examine your heart. Where where are you, right? Where are you at? Are you being uh, like Jesus to those around you? Are you taking care of your body and your mind and your and your spirit? And if you're not... I know I keep making these videos, but you better get on it because I, I don't want y'all creating nothing until you have a relationship with Jesus because that's what it's all about, right? Uh, and this is for the believer. If you're a non-believer, you know, I urge you to consider uh, giving your life over to having the, you know, God be your Lord, the 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 leader of your life to because he's leading you. And then you lead by that example. But if, if you're a non-believer, this doesn't apply to you, right? Because that's... You know, you create out of a desire to to just be creative. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, motive that is spiritual behind that. It's you want to create something awesome. You want to transform the world in some way and 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 get people to be excited about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Believers have that drive too. But honestly, guys, if you're a believer and you're not, um, you know, um, in relationship with the Lord, then you need to get that straight first. And then it also says here, uh, let's see, boast, here it is, all right, and it's talking about circumcision, and this idea of being circumcised in the flesh, um, and people do it to, to be, avoid being persecuted, right, so if you're being obedient and following rules to avoid hell, <laughs> that's not what relationship with Jesus is about, it's about being in relationship with him. It's not about law keeping like the Pharisees. So if you uh, instead have relationship with him and then you're obedient out of that and that's the fruit of it, out of gratitude for what he's done for you, that's going to pour into every aspect of your life, including your creativity. But I want to see it pour into your homes first, all right? Uh, and then it says here, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me an eye to the world. So if you're crucified to the world and you're not fulfilling uh, your desires for pleasure, right, or food or sex and all these things, and you're constantly rooted in who he's called you to be, you're going to have confidence as a leader. Um, but if you're not, you're going to go <laughs> three weeks without making a YouTube video or not touching your game for six months, right? These are all my struggles. These are the things that I've been guilty of. And uh, I want to have more consistency in my in my walk with you guys and my walk with the Lord, because out of that I think that we can all come together and create something incredible that impacts the world for Jesus, right? Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, 
you know, you guys told me to stop going on the notes and I didn't go on the notes barely at all today. So I'm getting more comfortable in front of the camera. I love you guys. I really, really love you guys. I want to talk to you guys more about this and I apologize for being absent. Uh, have some grace with me. Uh, I'm trying to understand what it means to, to lead just like you are. And to do so out of a confidence that the Holy Spirit will speak through me and not that I have to have it all perfect. As a perfectionist, it's hard. I want to have a um, certain production quality. I want to have certain things to say. And I, I, I have keep notes, Google keep notes everywhere. And I, I want to have everything perfect, but we don't, we're not called to be perfect. We're called to be Christ centered. And I encourage you to value that more than everything else in your life in this season. Maybe this is your kick in the butt, right? Uh, anyway, this is getting pretty long for a video. And if you like the video, just hit the little thumbs up. It helps me a lot. Subscribe. And I'm going to try to be more consistent for you. Love you guys. Bye.